What's going on? I'm here with my uh, Robin uh, 700 size uh, scale uh, Black Hawk, and I'm gonna show you guys my setup, my electronic setup for the uh, Spectrum uh, FC 6250HX five wireless unit, and it would be the same also with the new Spectrum 6350HX uh, um, FPO that just released. And so the setup is going to go based off the gyro orientation with the ports facing to the back, so towards the tail. Um, as you can see my, my unit's right there in the back, that's where I mount mine. Now, this is only going to be for setting up the, the five artists uh, through the radio. Uh, you'll, still, you'll still have to set it up mechanically, and uh, maybe I can make a se separate video on how my, my the length of my linkages and then that'll make it easier i hope so you know i'm hoping so for anyone trying to set this up and then mainly this is because i had some people ask me um, what settings i'm using to uh fly this so here are some of them so first off let's go to the beginning model setup That's gonna turn off our our uh, radio signal. So go into flight mode setup and then select switch B. Should it should already be selected as a default, but if it's not, select B. For your hold switch, um, select H, and then uh, that's gonna be uh, your hold switch. So when you you know whenever you want to cut a, cut off the mo all power to the motor, you just flip that switch. And then you can select uh, what position you want it to activate. I always do it on one because I want my switches to be off in the zero position. So, you know, you, it should already be set up for you. Just select, select the switch. Um, go to channel assign. This is going to be for your flight modes. So, you should only move a few things here. Uh, channel 7, you want to select flight mode. And then everything else should resemble what I have here. Your, um, where is the other one? Let's see. Oh yes, your frame rate. Um, with the newer radios, it should already be selected. Uh, to hybrid 11, 22, 11 slash 22 milliseconds. If not, you should check this, otherwise the servos will not uh, react uh, too well. So it should be 11 milliseconds, um, hybrid 11 slash 22, not 22 only. So it looks like default is 22 milliseconds. So then exit, exit out of there, bind the helicopter at this point, you bind your your um, your, your, uh, your fly bars unit, exit out. Hold one. So I Hold one. Normal. Hold one. So place it in hold. This jumps straight into forward programming. Uh, this is mainly where you will find your, uh, you know, your PIDs and your custom settings for the fly bars unit, and also um, where you set up stability mode. So swash play. Uh, actually, let's go to setup first. So we're gonna go to setup. Make sure this matches here the flight mode channel it's going to output from aux 2 remember we put on aux 2 we put flight mode so these are going to talk to each other the gain channel is going to be gear you do nothing for six so now you go to gyro settings go to gyro settings select your orientation that matches your uh, your setup 
as you can see, my the nose of the helicopter, in reference to the pins on the on the flyboarders unit, my pins are facing the tail, and that would be position five. You calibrate your sensor. Mine's already calibrated. There's no need exit out of that throttle. Uh, this is gonna be. It should be default to zero for offset, but you want to have hovering at 65, and then capture your fail safes, and then um, pretty much just go through your Timer's get out of thought uh, hold. And it should tell you if, if you have any uh, offsets. Essentially, Normal. that's going to reduce the power in that Hold. flight mode uh, using the, the fly wireless unit. And it's really not going to output. It's going to reduce how much you can output on in that, um, in that flight mode. So if I set an offset for 50%, if I set it to 100% in the throttle curve, it's only going to output 50% of total power from the ESC in that curve, in that uh, in that uh, idle position. So if it's idle up to, um, technically, let's say the safest RPM I can run on this helicopter. Let's say it's um, I don't know, 1800. Uh, don't take my word for it. I think it's more like 1600. So if I don't ever want to increase it higher than what it should. I can set it so that idle up two only gives what I need and still display the 100% value, but it's still not outputting its full potential. So that's what you can do kind of to organize your, your throttle curves and make them more, I would say, uh, look more evened out. So that way it's actually at 60 and it's 80 and then 100 or, you know, you don't want to have some weird number where, you know, you're like at... 30 and then 50 and then 70 is enough to give you that um, power you need but it just looks kind of funky so that's what that's for and then tail rotor actually let's back out of there for now so now let's yeah let's go with this uh, swash plate setup we're still in setup by the way Okay, so E-ring 100, phasing 0, decay 50, I don't know what these do, but just leave them alone. Output setup. Your frame rate, depending on what servos you're using, it's 333 Hz. For the most part, the cyclic servos are going to be 333. These are a spectrum servos. Um, and then you select your swash type, otherwise it won't move. For this specific setup, you're going to select three servos, 120 degrees. So you got the letter C, A, and B. So A, B, C. A being on the right, being the right front servo. And then C, and then you, you get the idea. It's just, you have to select that. And then after you go to your directions, you will copy this too. So channel one reverse, two and three normal. Sub trims. These are my sub trims. This will not resemble your assembly. This should work for you, but if on if and only you copy my mechanical setup with my me me measuring my rods and everything should be streamlined if you copy everything exactly as I do. But again, some of these servos are not centered out of the box, so you might get a different sub trim on the servos for centering. Uh, so that's it for output setup on the uh, swash plate. AFR, here's how much collective you will be using uh, for this helicopter and to achieve the right pitch. So for rolling pitch, 70 uh, will, will be enough so that it doesn't bind anywhere. Collective, you want a maximum of 40 and you want no negative pitch on this helicopter. There's no room for negative pitch. Uh, I think I've, if anything I have maybe about eight degrees negative pitch or less than that i think it's more like two of them if i'm not wrong so we can exit out of that now let's do tail rotor output setup 
the direction, tail, tail rotor is normal. Sub trim on mine is uh, 28. Travel, I have a uh, 42 and 52, and this just depends again on the rod uh, length. This might vary. Just make sure you have the travel um, equal both sides, and that it it stops. It travels the full length of the uh, tail rotor shaft, left and right. That'll get you there. And then for my tail servo, I'm using the Spectrum one, so that's six. 560 hertz. Advanced setup would probably be just phasing a pre-comp. There's nothing in there for me, but I got zero and zero. So. Okay, so now that we're out of this, um, I want you to set up your your PIDs for your swash plate. So agility, I have 80. For a roll, um, I have 300 uh, frames per second. That's the speed. Proportional is 65. Integral is 85. Uh, derivative is 7. Normal. That's on hold. For normal, uh, for normal position normal, so that would be. 40, 45, 70. Timer start. Stunt one is uh, 40, 45, 7. Stunt two. And then stunt two, I have 60, 60, 20. Stunt normal. Okay, so now let's get back at it. Let's go to pitch now. It should be the same, if I'm not wrong. So normal is 50, 60, 50. Oh, here was hold. I guess I didn't change that one at all. Timer start. Stunt one, 60, 50, 14. Stunt two. Stunt two is 60, 60, 20. Stunt normal. Okay, so. Okay, so uh, and make sure you fly this on a jig. Do not don't fly it or test flight it in the fuselage. Either way, it makes it more difficult to fine tune if you have to make changes because once you you know keep pulling this thing in and out, you're gonna possibly just damage it, chip it, or crack it. I mean, it's not that fragile, but why would you take the the extra? You know, I I, I why would you not take the extra precaution? So now. Um, I went into the wrong tail rotor. Uh, I have 488 frames per second on the speed. Start up, start and stop. I, I don't change. So for normal, let's go. With, I, for hold, I have 85, 120, 14. That should probably be um, the stock uh, tune. Normal. For normal, I have 85, 110, 14. Stunt one is. Timer start. 85, 110, 14, same thing. And stunt Not two, uh, I have 60, 60, 10. Stunt one. And I also keep stop. in mind, I run a little higher head speed. I, I'm, I'm running about, mm, I would say, uh, using with using the Avion 120 and PAC, which it also has something to mention on this. Is this shut down on me one time? I landed it, it's okay. Get a 200 amp ESC, please. I mean, this is just for the amount of money in this helicopter, do not run a 120 amp. Run a, a, a 200 uh, amp ESC Spectrum just released one. So uh, look into that one. It's worth the extra 100 bucks, and that way you have no problems. Plus, you get all the telemetry and battery voltage, um, live battery voltage, which you can also see how much you have left for flying, safe flying. So, um, so yeah, so we were tail rotor, normal, Timer start. stunt one, stunt two. stunt two, just copy Timer this start. and I am running like around 1800 head speed. It's a little higher for this model, but it, I made sure, you know, everything's, you know, well put together and they can handle it. So it gives you better tail authority too. 
safe. This is probably the one that you're going to be interested in the most. So stability. If this is not working for you and you don't, you don't see all modes uh, for stability, and then something set up with your channel assign, assignment and your um, uh, the setup in your uh, your uh, forward programming it's not selected on AUX2 just copy everything I have and it should be fine so your gain uh, leave that alone 50 envelope 60 uh, the envelope is just how much you can tilt the helicopter uh, how many degrees you can tilt it forward back sideways uh, left and right um, instability so I have it at 60 degrees so it'll only allow it to tilt uh, 60 degrees um, being instability mode you can do more 60 it seems to be okay for me I mean this is a pretty heavy helicopter so a normal mode I have it on Timer start. stunt one I have it on stunt two. stunt two I have it off and it's as simple as just clicking it on or off it'll be different with your other radios mine's a touch screen just Time use the dial Exit out of this, and panic and recovery is going to be your panic button. I don't really mess with this one. Just leave that one alone. If you have panic, you'll set up panic on this button. On the I button. Attitude trim. I You don't need no attitude trims. Uh, mine are at 10, mine is 15. I normally zero them out, but that's just because I probably had to see I had to fly it quickly and uh, I normally zero them out and just recalibrate the, the five artist unit and keep them at zero uh, so that's all pretty much and then we can exit out of this disconnect the helicopter when you do this next step do not keep it on because the motor will abruptly uh, spin really fast and being it so heavy you don't want anything just jerking right off the you know the table and stuff like that and you don't want to break anything on this thing. So with this disconnected, I can show you the rest now. Um, so here's my throttle cut, my throttle, my pitch curve. This is the pitch curve you should use. So my pitch curve for normal, here's for it is for hold. For hold is also the same for normal as normal. So it's 30, 40, 50, 75, 100. That's 30, 40, same thing. And then everything else, <clears throat> stunt one and stunt two should be all the same. That's going to be your curve all across the board on, on all flight modes. There's nothing uh, linear because it's just not going to be doing any 3D. It's just flying. Time remaining three minutes. So that's, th you know, you can even do 45, 40, 50. That's probably more ideal. But you want some negative just because that way you can, um, you, you're able to do like a auto if you need to, I mean, it's not going to do you any good anyways, because it's going to come down pretty hard. Um, it probably won't auto that great. So in my opinion, you're probably better off uh, going a higher pitch at uh, at the beginning. So I would do more like a 40, 45. You'll still have some negative, but it, like I said, it's, it's just pointless. But it does help for descending faster. So that's one thing. Um, then you'll have your, my throttle curve. This is all you will be doing here. My throttle curve is at using the 120 amp VSC. Stunt two is at 84%. Stunt stunt one. one is at 80% and stunt, uh, normal mode is at 80%. So it's, you know, it's, it's pretty up there. I mean, it's, that's. I think I'm, I'm running about 1,700 RPM, 1,800 RPM, or if I'm not wrong, that's pretty high, so I'm more like at 1,650, 1,700 max. You know, play with it. This shouldn't be in the 2,000s because that's just way too high for this. You don't want this coming apart in midair, so that those are my my adjustments. So just I hope that works out for you, man, and you know, have, have a happy day flying at the field. All right, bye.